for Rankin and equally delightful Phil Vickery. <laughs> Did you see his reshuffle? Yeah. <laughs> Did you like that? Did you like the little yeah, reshuffle? A little bit of a shake going on there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shaky, shaky, you shaky. You must be feeling spacey we today. Rapping, we do sort of a bit, bit of rapping now, but. Uh, Back in the 40s, ladies and gentlemen, it was all that kind of Lindy Hop stuff. Do you ever think about I'm, Lindy Hop? I'm much too young for that. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> they don't even want to go there, do they? Hey, uh -huh. today, this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get very nostalgic. We're taking you back to the 1940s. Oh, yes, we are. Please welcome, from Milton Keynes, Amanda Pickard. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. Thank you. Lovely to see you. Thank Come you. and meet uh -huh. Paul. Hi. Hi. A 1940s enthusiast. Tell us a little yeah. bit about this. I mean, you've got the gear on. That's it. Um, I've always been interested in the 40s and, and the sort of austerity period, and I like sort of going out to the public and teaching them about it as well. Mm -hmm. so. so, and what's this uh, gear then? Tell, tell us a little bit about this. This is the WVS, the WVS. Women's Voluntary Service. That's right. Um, and what they would have done is helped people to um, work with their rations. So I would have showed women how to um, use their rations most effectively, how mm. to make recipes, how to make them stretch, how to use things from your garden. Sure. And um, is, this, is this a handbag? No, this is my gas mask case. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's got my lipstick in it. I hope you've it. got a few apples and mangoes <laughs> and things in there. My black market goods in there. <laughs> Let's have a look in your bag. I want okay. the 1940s. My mum <laughs> remembers, you know, working in the shop and the, yeah. the vouchers and people coming in for yeah. half a cup of sugar and all that sort of oh, stuff. And I think they got one egg a, a month or something like mm, that, mm. you know? A week, yeah. One a week. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what have you brought along here today, then? Now, I've got some um, pea pods, mm -hmm. uh, peas in their pods, because mm. certainly during the war years, you were really, really um, pushed hard to make the most of absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. So you'd have used your peas, and then you would have used your pea pods to make ah, soup okay. and then reuse them. Nothing was... A bit like Anthony Thompson cooking, really, isn't it? <laughs> Correct. Absolutely Anthony nothing throws everything wasted. in there. Yeah, good. Um, the government also launched a campaign for potato pea, because you could yeah. use potatoes for so many different dishes. Sure. Mm. Uh, and then mincemeat. Um, mincemeat was really um, leading up to the war, because as the war years really kicked in, you would mm. use mincemeat for corned beef and things like that. So mm. that's so a bit of a treat. So how much did you pay for all of that? Tomatoes, parsnip and onion? Uh, £4.88 altogether. Yeah, good. In those days, it would cost about fruit and tape. That's it, wouldn't yeah. It? <laughs> 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 Do you remember that? The old tanner. Yeah. Half a bob. <laughs> what do you think, Chef? I like this sort of food. It's kind of like the kind of food I grew up with in Ireland. Yeah. And... Uh, it's, it's happy memories. It's nice, yeah, super. Very I, good. I, don't, I don't mind that at all. Very yeah. nice indeed. And here's someone else that you don't mind. No. Well, you see him every day. <laughs> yeah, it's her husband, ladies and gentlemen. Also <laughs> from Milton Keys, it's Craig Pickard. <laughs> Okay. I'm doing fine. So this is a 1940s working. It's sort of a gent attire, yeah, sort of like a, a working man would wear. Yeah. That's right. And why so. the cravat? Is the cravat just to cover up no, the, I didn't the really black want... collar? Well, that's it. The collar was uh, in the wash, you know. Yeah. So, uh, well, this is what often happened, didn't so, it? So they. they just like, and I think, you know, if I'm on the pictures, I want to mm. make, you know, I want to look a bit like Gary Cooper. Yeah. I like your tank top. <laughs> no, no, sleeveless jumper. Oh, sorry, sleeveless jumper. It's a tank top. <laughs> Is he best. your Gary Cooper, is he, love? He tries to be. <laughs> he tries to be. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at your okay, bag. We'll talk ahead. more about all the bits and pieces you've brought along Shall shortly, you? Craig. Yeah, I'll give it a bit of a shake for you. You like cooking? Oh, I let the wife do that, you yeah. know. Do. OK, 1940s attitude there. Yeah, get in the yeah, kitchen. The Go on in the kitchen, love. <laughs> <laughs> right, what have we got here, then? Well, what have we got? We've got a little bit of pre-war here. We've got mm -hmm. some fudge. Mm -hmm. Now, that would disappear very early on in the war, although you could make it out your own rations, but you're mm -hmm. probably looking at... You're probably looking at, much, looking at a month's worth of rations there. Yeah, wow. so, so, um, an ounce a week, wasn't it, sugar? Oh, it does speak to the wife. Okay. She does that sort of oh, thing, speaks to the wife. <laughs> Um, as for, uh, you know, so, but I thought, you know, special on the pictures, yeah. I'll, bring, I'll bring the, uh, the fudge mm. along, you know, it's, it's only about four years old. Yeah, that's not Cheers. too bad. That's good. Well, you've got some interesting <laughs> stuff, but elaborate more on this shortly, Craig, but how yeah. much did you spend? Porridge oaks, we've got a tin of pineapple, condensed milk there, carrots and apple and... That's yeah. £5 and three pence. Well, we're not go. going to moan about that. Yeah. Uh, Phil, is this a bit of a challenge for you? Well, it is a big challenge. What would you do with carrots and porridge? Porridge? Well, you could make, um, carrot fudge. Could I? You could try carrot, carrot fudge. Carrot fudge, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And to, make it, uh, to, to make it a little bit more difficult for our chefs, we've also got a powdered egg in the larder Are today. We? All right, mate. And no butter, margarine. We like a bit of that, don't we? All right, you have a bit of a think. Let's find out what Amanda's going to get from Paul. Well, I think we're going to do mince and tatties, but the tatties will be a bit different. We'll put some parsnip in there, so mm. it's a parsnip 
and potato mash. Uh, we're going to do a spicy burger as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll serve that with a, a sort of potato roasty thing and uh, a spicy tomato, fresh tomato ketchup sauce thing. Mm. We're going to try the pea pod soup. Yep. And uh, we're going to fry the skins because you wouldn't waste anything. Absolutely though, would you? not. Absolutely. No, we'll do some crispy yeah. skins. That sounds good. Lovely. Happy with that? Yes. Yeah, and I was only joking about the margarine and butter. There, there is butter in the larder too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so don't panic, guys. But there ain't no eggs though. It's only powder. Is there eggs still? What about you? What are you going to do? Well, I reckon uh, this says to me key lime pie. Yeah. I've just come back from there, so oh, it's yeah. fantastic. But they did a baked one. Mm. We'll do a pineapple salsa to go with baked fudge apples. We'll do carrot and fudge cake steamed. We'll do mm. pineapple porridge and that's it, I think. Pineapple porridge, key but, lime pie. Really nice, yeah. Oh, and we'll do a yeah. carrot cake. Carrot cake. Does it taste better? <laughs> OK. Husband and wife are happy for the moment. <laughs> I don't know how long that will last. All right, but our chefs have got 20 minutes to create some 1940s grub, if you like. When I say ready, steady, cook. OK, up, up and away. Here we go. Get those aprons on. Mint and tatties. It's an absolute classic, but our chef's just not going to do any ordinary mint. He's going to lace it with a little bit of the old uh, For you, parsnip. That's going to go through there. A fresh tomato sauce. That's kind of nice when you see tomatoes. When you've got 20 minutes, it's going to be interesting to see how that comes out. A bit of sugar and vinegar reduction there. OK, and we've also got the old beans there. And talk about skins, all the different skins he's going to deep fry. I wonder if that's going to come in the form of a tempura. Come over here. Um, Phil's going to make key lamb pa. Yeah. He's uh, just been touring around uh, America, deep, deep sort of all the south and Orleans and all that type of places. And so he knows a lot about American food at the moment. And we're going to get the benefits of that this afternoon. We've got the... Uh, Oh, what are you going to do with this in the end, do I? I'm going to put that Make a fudge pudding. Fudge pudding. Fudge pudding, we've got carrot cake, all sorts of uh, lovely things. So, there we are. Fun, two, three, four, five, maybe about uh, eight or nine little dishes coming your way in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. And, of course, we've got the quickie bag to come later. Now, do you, do you often keep the skins and uh, fry them off at work? Uh, yeah, I'm a sort of mean type of guy, so I would do that all the time. Charge the customers 10 quid for fried skins. <laughs> they love it, <laughs> <you know? laughs> No, and you'd probably get away with it. You'd People sprinkle something on top. People would be disgusted if they thought you were doing that on purpose just to save money. You know? Oh no! But you know, there, there is this thing that that uh, you know that they say in Ireland that that the people who, who kept the skins on their potatoes did better in the famine than those that didn't. You know, mm -hmm. so the skin there's a lot of nutrition in the skin and just sure. underneath the skin. And I think it's the same for most vegetables. So during the war, I think you would have been encouraged to keep your skins uh, absolutely. on your. Absolutely, you you wouldn't have you wouldn't have wasted a thing. Yeah. Um, and certainly, you were encouraged if you couldn't use it to cook with, you would have kept the tops and the bottoms and put sure, them in pig sure. bins. Yeah. To feed and the you, pigs. you've even got the lovely 40s hairstyle there, I haven't have, you? Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> Does it take you long to do that, then, Amanda? No. Once once you've done it a few times, it, it is literally kind of two seconds. And so you're yeah, doing something done. for me. Isn't it? <laughs> it sort of reminds me of some 1940s movie stars, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yes, I know. I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. Do you like that? That makes you, that's, that does it for you. Who were it? the movie stars in those days? Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper. And I'm always a, a big fan. Yeah. Pats Gary Cooper. Back. Stuart Granger. Yeah, Robert and, uh... Mitchum. Who was that lady who used Ooh. to walk down the stairs all, all the time? She used to start her. She was a Hollywood. That's What's my her... wife. The wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give you the wife. <laughs> I'll remember her in a minute. It will all come <laughs> flooding back to me. Briefly, Chef, what's happening here before I disappear? I'm doing my, uh, my carrot and parsnip mash. Uh -huh. Just getting that on early. Lovely. And we've got the potted peas there. And Things it's a happening. lovely combination, you know, because mm. sometimes parsnip mash is just, a, by itself, is just a little bit too strong. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the potato parsnip mash... It really balances it out yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and okay. the, the texture of pureed parsnips is lovely and creamy naturally mm. by itself. She was telling me that they used... What was the banana thing you were telling me? Um, mock banana. Yeah. So they, they always came up, um, the home economists, with many ingenious recipes and ways to kind of excite food. Because mm -hmm. that was one of the things in wartime, it was very bland. Yeah. Um, so they did mock banana, because obviously bananas weren't uh, imported so what did they use? anymore. What they... It was parsnips, banana flavouring and a very little bit of sugar. And you squish it down to the... So it looks like squash banana, basically. There Isn't that disgusting? No, it's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> I think that's a nice idea. Yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm going to put that in the menu. See how that 
that goes. <laughs> and charge 45 quid yeah. a pop. Yeah, yeah right, I know. All right, over here, we're in the red tomato no, kitchen. Five points, Phil Vickery is starting to cook down his pineapple. He used tinned like, pineapple and he's got a little bit of sugar underneath. What are you doing, actually, here, Shane? You make an upside down cake, Haynes. OK. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. And here, I've got to yeah. say, my mum and dad had a sweet shop. Well, my grandma had a sweet shop in the wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they see it one ounce a week. What else? Is, is that it? Yeah. Just no more than that. Here we are, Chef. Oh, duh. Oh, do you want it off or on? Oh, hang on. I've got to use powder there, haven't I? Uh, what have you used? No, no. I've got to put this stuff in, haven't I? Eh? Uh, yeah. So, it's one teaspoon. There we are. So that's about what? Do you call that two teaspoons? Got to be in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Four yeah. teaspoons? Yeah, roughly. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They put the old lot in, Phil. Let's <laughs> have, let the other one start floating off. <laughs> so what I need to do is... Um, Craig, tell us about powdered eggs, then. What's the equivalent? One teaspoon per egg? I think it... The wife will tell you about the knives. I think it's two level teaspoons yeah. equivalent to one egg. OK, there you go, guys. It's got to be level. If you don't do level, it goes all rubbery. Oh, does it? Yeah. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> now you tell me. Now you tell me. <laughs> and e e everybody's probably thinking, oh, no, oh, no, but you can still get it. Some supermarkets stock it, ladies and gentlemen, and you can get it at health food stores too. So check it out. I mean, it's, it's quite good, especially for baking. You should know about that. You're a fabulous yeah, but baker. I, I don't often get used... Ask for much for powdered egg. Yeah. Actually, it's pretty, pretty good for you, actually, isn't it? Did you used to go to your uh, grandparents' sweet shop, then? No, it's in the wall years. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that old? I don't look it. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I used to love going to the old style shops. Didn't you, Craig? They used to oh, smash the toffee. Remember the toffee yeah, hammer? Yeah. And they used to wait, wait like that, and all their fingers were there. They wouldn't allow that now, would they? They used to drop little bits in there, and if they liked you, she'd wink, drop a bit more toffee in there. Oh, you squeeze those. Okay, for let's find out what Phil's today. doing over here. Uh, now we've got some porridge, um, knife, knife, what, oats cooking down. Yeah, going to be a oats. porridge. I'm going to make a pineapple porridge, James. Okay, pineapple porridge. And what um, I've done here yeah. is I've put in the egg. I've had a touch of water to reconstitute it. OK. So we're going to make a, a, a croissant pudding. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, a, a fudge pudding. So okay. fudge into there. This should work, Ainsley. Is that soft enough, Phil? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Is, it's is fine. this microwave one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's actually, okay. It should be fine. Mm -hmm. So what I'll also do is put a little bit of condensed milk into there as well. OK. And just a touch in there, just to lighten it very, very slightly. Mm. And we're just... I don't want to mix it up too much, cos I want to be able to see the ripples in it when we cook it. And was a condensed milk a very popular thing in the 40s? Oh, yeah, it was huge, wasn't it? It's yeah. one of these I haven't seen. I haven't seen one of these since 1939. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him. He's taking it a bit far now, I'll cry, isn't he? <laughs> He's going all the way back now. <laughs> no. OK, 13 minutes to go, gentlemen. In there. Put that in the microwave. About three and a half minutes, eh, I reckon. OK, you happy? Three. Start. And away we go. Yes, yeah, it's cooking cool. down there. Okay, okay, three and a half minutes in there. And um, what has he got you doing over here then, Look, Craig? What uh, are you doing? I haven't got a clue on these. I didn't think they came from the victory yeah, garden. Yeah, key lime pie, so I need to... Yeah. <laughs> the victory <laughs> garden used to be the what? It's basically a vegetable Veg patch. Okay. But, you know, you have did to... you ever have one of those, or uh, did you have one? Of we had one now? for about three years. Yeah, come, come over here. I'm because... blocking everybody. Yeah, no, I can't see you there. And um, but basically, when we had our first little girl, yeah, it was just too much effort, basically. So I turfed it over in the end. Yeah. And what type of things did you grow in there? Were you trying to recapture that period? Oh yeah, we did. Um, you know, the usual sort of potatoes, carrots, onions, always like a bit of onion, a bit of flavouring in there. Do you want the skins? No, thanks, thanks. Still give it that. Can't throw that away. You can't. Well, I'll put them in a bag and you can take them <laughs> <Take> home. <laughs> <laughs> it's as good as giving it to Hitler, that uh, is. <laughs> I'll give you that, mate. Can I just show that? Here we are. I was going to show this, Ainsley, really yeah, quickly. Key go. lime pie, dead mm. easy. There's two ways of doing it. You can bake it yeah. with egg yolks and freeze it, which is absolutely delicious. Or you can do it this way. Yeah. We've got... Um, Con condensed milk. Condensed milk. Yeah. We've got lime juice and cream. Yeah. And literally, I'll just show you how quick it is. You just pour the lime juice in. And you stir, mm -hmm. you stir, stir, keep stirring, okay. and pour it straight out. OK. And that will set in about six minutes. OK. Look how that's thickens, thickens straight actually, away. It reacts, isn't it? The Look acidity at that. Act, reacts to the... Uh... And we'll put that in the fridge, Ains. OK. And then we're going to just give it a quick glaze up before we go. Look how that's okay. thickened already. Look at that. And what did you put underneath? Oat sugar and what? Cinnamon? Oh, and... I made like a bit of a cheesecake type base yeah. using the porridge. OK. And that was set in about seven minutes. Okay. Here okay. we go, guys. Excellent. Key lamb pie. Right, so next thing, can you chop that pie up like Phil, have you finished with this here? Uh, no, I can use that, eh? OK. Thank you. Let's go back over here. Let's see uh, how Paul's back. getting on. Thankfully. We're back in the green pepper kitchen. Can you just uh, break mm. up this mince for me here? Yeah. Thanks, darling. OK. 
This is the type of thing that you cook at home? I, I've tried out, because um, I go around to museums and schools and mm -hmm. talk about wartime food and cooking, Yeah. I have to try them out at home, so poor old Craig is a bit of a guinea pig for me. Ah, and so it's a bit bland, the food, though, because you haven't got many spices or anything. No, so but um, I, I did something <clears throat> for an active age centre, and, and it was a lot of people that had lived through the mm. war, and they thought food was very bland, but actually mm. it, it is quite tasty, because you had herbs and spices that you grew in your garden, mm. so you could actually make the food, and they were surprised, actually, how tasty wartime sure. cooking can be. So f this is how families survived on the type that's of rations, it. isn't and, they? Um, that's why home economists, like you, um, a lot of people have heard of Marguerite Patton. Oh, I know she... Marguerite. <laughs> halfway, gentlemen, halfway. She's a good mate of yours, ain't she? Oh, <laughs> I love Marguerite. Uh, Marguerite, I think she's about 100 on cookery books. She's the most fascinating that's lady. It. She's about well, 90. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still goes around lecturing on wartime food. Mm -hmm. But um, she, sort of, she was one of the people that kind of came up with mock banana and mock goose and mock crab which is what I tried out on um, this Active Age Centre. Yeah. Can you put a little bit of oil in there for me, please? It, into where? Into the that oh, small no. Not in a small frying pan. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. Is that yeah. a little bit? <laughs> that, that is a little bit, yeah. I think, what are you making there, Chef Burgers? I'm making burgers. Yeah. So these are sort of spicy ones. In here I've got uh, crushed chilies, I've got some cumin, I've got some coriander yeah. seed, and so a little bit yeah. of ginger. Sure. OK, for all of our young viewers out there who have absolutely no idea what a ration book looked like, when my mother arrived here in the very early 50s, she, saw, she was given a ration book. So, you know, it's something that you took to the shop and then they would take it off. Have you got one on you? I've got a supplement. Yeah, go on then, look at this. Have, have a look. It's really <laughs> interesting. So you've got an ID card, because yeah. everybody had to have an ID card, and without one of them, you wouldn't have got your ration book. So OK. There you go. It's just a reproduction one. That's a reproduction one, yeah. And then this is a supplement ration book. Mm -hmm. uh, which would have had your points in, which you would have taken to your grocer, your baker, your Okay. Your and how did, it, how did it actually work then? They, um, you would have gone along and um, you would have had to register with a, uh, a butcher, a greengrocer grocer, yeah. and things like that. Um, and then you would have gone along and they would have each week cut out the points um, that it took. So you had your basic rations, which you still had to buy. So what's the average family get a week then, uh, Amanda? Um, <laughs> I can tell you, it's usually butter, uh, lard, margarine, sugar. Um, one packet of butter a week, it's, one it's packet of lard. so, so many ounces um, yeah. of each thing. And you would have got a small portion of sweets. Um, Four pints of milk, I think. Um, For the whole week? Sorry, yeah. My son gets through that a night after football. <laughs> well, at the worst point in the war, um, yeah. milk rationing actually went down to one pint a week per adult. So wow. Unless you were pregnant like me, then yeah. you got extra. Then you got extra. <laughs> I got yours. <laughs> did you really? Yeah. You got vitamin C tablets yeah, I and did. stuff yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, I, I mean, we yeah. take it for granted now we can pop I into do. a shop and just buy these That's things. It, yeah. So nice of you bringing that on for me. <laughs> OK, we'll chat again. Yeah. Um, Chef is cooking a rosti here, guys. Tell us a little bit about this kind of almost like shoestring rosti as opposed to it being finely grated, Chef. Why have you done it like that? <laughs> Because that's the way I do it. <laughs> you prefer it like that, do you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, that is kind of the French way. It's, uh, it's kind of like what they would call a pomme d'arfin kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, pomme d'arfin. Will you dice those up for me, yeah. darling? We're going to make a wee so we've got sauce a... for that. Um, pomme d'arfin. Pomme d'arfin. That's lovely. And how about Darfin this? How interesting is that, guys? He's taken the mint. I had a bit extra, so I just stuffed take... that into the tomato. OK, and we're just going to be frying that off a little bit in a touch of butter. Probably yeah. end up in the now, oven or something like I've that. thought of nice another idea. sort of really good, um, mm. thrifty yeah. thing to do. Yeah. And I've been cooking my potatoes and parsnips mm -hmm. in, uh, in water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that water to sort of flesh out my pea soup. How thrifty am I? Yeah. That's the way you yeah. do it, you see? There you go. <laughs> Waste <laughs> not want Absolutely. not. Absolutely. How many times have we heard mums and grannies and all that say that? Waste not want not. I think it's so, mm. so true. You incorporate it, all that lovely flavour, don't so, dump that water away, all the nutrients, when you're boiling vegetables, all the nutrients are released into the water, so use it. Why not? Don't salt it Look at my beautiful though. crispy skins coming out. Yeah, looking fantastic, mm. Paul. What about clothes? Do you have a, a wardrobe of 1940s gear at home? Um, we've got... Um, it started off as a wardrobe, and it's now several wardrobes. Oh <laughs> hey, Craig, has she got lots of clothes at home? <laughs> I'll tell you, it's expanded into my wardrobe now. <laughs> yeah. Really? There's not much left for you then, mate. There isn't. <laughs> yes, see? Yeah, he, he does, he opens the wardrobe door and says, this uh, isn't mine. So I'm like, oops. <laughs> How did and of that course, your little daughter, was it Maisie? Maisie, yeah, she's got... 40s gear for her too? Yeah, and we've got uh, a big old Marmette pram that she goes around in and people just love the, the old pram uh, and relate to it. You, she's, got the, she's got the whole hog, isn't she? She's really <laughs> doing it well. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. We love that. OK, let's briefly uh, talk with... Um, 
our chef Paul. here before we Paul. Dis Paul. Yeah, Paul. Paul. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm so I'm so mean to Easy sometimes, aren't I? He deserves I know, it. Man. I know, Paul. Um, thank you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> you're a big idiot, you. I know you're a big idiot. I love you too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> OK, we've got five minutes to go. We're back down in the uh, red tomato kitchen right. with Phil Vickery here, finding out what's going on. Phil's got a uh, pudding that's just come out of the uh, yeah, oven there. Finish with the, off in a minute. All, 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 that, uh, all the fudges at the bottom there. And what have we got here, Well, um, I once read a recipe that used to use carrots instead of oranges. Yeah. And they would use the juice and the colour to you know, make, like, an orange mock pudding. Yeah. So we used to use orange pancakes. Mm -hmm. We used to use carrots like this, finely grated, a bit of sugar, make like a, almost like a carrot pancake mm. and then roll it up. You didn't have oranges in those days. No, 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 no. It's kind of a nice way of doing it. You yeah. can spice up your oranges too, didn't you? Well, My I, mum used to cook with an awful lot of orange. Now, Phil, what about the, uh, you've got the key lime pie. Anything that needs to be done to that oh, when no. it comes out? Yeah, OK, we'll, we'll have we a little do. bit of a look at that. Yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, look at that, Ace. Look at that. It's actually set. Look at that. Yeah. It's look at that. Set in... Look, look, guys. It's set, in... it's set in four minutes. It's just it's setting off. So I'll put it back in there for it's a second. Please, Ains. OK, put it back in the old freezer. That will really set that off. Lovely. Tell us about your furnishings. Have you got 1940 furnishings? 1930s mainly. 1930s? You've got a few 1940s that's stuff. Your, your, that was your first love, wasn't it? Edwardian. Well, I liked period. Edwardian, but then say so wife dragged me forward a few years. Mm. Everyone was assumed because it's Second World War. Yeah. I got my wife involved. It's the other way round. And what is it? Is, is, is it better kissing her in the 30s or the 40s? <laughs> <laughs> well, you get a blackout in the 40s. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I feel like an American game show. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, what about television? Modern TV or...? Oh, well, we do... We do I mean, I must admit, we do have a modern telly, but it did, uh, pack up, did pack up a few, um, few months ago. So we got the old black and white one out, cos you just can't throw stuff away. You know, you've got to make yeah. do and mend. So, so you've, got dad, a black and white you've got a black TV. and white telly. Anybody in the audience got a black and white TV? <laughs> <laughs> You're well behind the times, yeah. mate. Uh, but you, after you can't throw away it's working. Cook. Can you imagine looking at that on Ready, Steady, Cook? It'll be white with little black bits in it. That yeah. is a beautiful colour. The food comes alive, Craig. It, I know, but it's like when you listen on the wireless, you can imagine it, can't you, as well? All right, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, then. <laughs> we could imagine it. <laughs> Chef, uh, powdered eggs, successful or what? I'll tell we'll, you what. We'll find out when you taste yeah. it. They're not too bad, actually, I have to say. All right, then, three minutes to go now. Tell us what's going on here, Phil. Is this a little pancake? Yeah, I'm going to make a little pancake and roll it up, please. OK. OK, and the batter is just what? Should I toss it over? Yeah, please, yeah. yeah. What's, what's in the batter? <laughs> <laughs> What's gone into the batter here, Chef? Powdered egg, yeah. um, a little bit of sugar, um, surface in flour, yeah. and we're just going to set it like a pancake, roll it up, brilliant. and put some porridge inside. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Looking okay. good. Uh, hey, good. so how many, how many times a week do you get out to all the colleges, museums and schools? Well, look, I actually, I mean, I work full-time. I work for the NHS. Yeah. It's my wife who does most of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's about three or four times a month. Yeah. It's kind of nice, though, isn't it? It is nice, it is it's nice. It's lovely. And you've got another baby on the way. Congratulations. Yes, yes. I never want to be photographed endlessly posing oh, in a pram. I know. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Family's growing yeah. and you're remembering history. It's a brilliant thing. OK, mate, tell us what's that. This is the pineapple upside down cake. Yeah. It should. Again, using powdered eggs I've never used before. So. OK. So we keep, keep We've got cooked. two minutes to go. Well, look at that. Hey. Yeah. There you go. You can ask that boss? Yeah, All right, time is of the essence now, ladies and gentlemen. Briefly back yeah. down here, we've got wonderful, lovely, crispy uh, potato and parsnip skins. We've got a fine, fine soup that you've been blitzing away. Do you want that past, Chef, or do you want to keep it like that? No, no, I want it past, ideally. Past? Past. past. Okay, past. Here, <laughs> here, 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 here. Past. A bit of a bowl there. Yeah. Past. Ooh, we've got one and a half minutes past. and past. Very little. Oh, you're passing it already. I'm just yeah, getting this go. up the past <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Lost me. <laughs> oh, that's it. And of course, you know, people don't realise that one of the reasons that you know wealthy families suffered really badly mm. in the war is because they were used to having up, servants. Darling. That's it. And then... Masher, masher. Mm -hmm. yeah. There it is. Okay. You used to have all these servants, and suddenly the servants went off to war. End of the story. So well, there was something that was actually produced, which was a, a leaflet for women who had servants to say, at 11 o'clock you do this, yeah. 12 o'clock you do this. So exactly. So Suddenly was, uh, how reliant they were. OK, this. time is of the essence now, everybody. A little bit of butter going into the old mash. Right, that's it. Get a spoon and uh, here we are.
coming round. That's it. Grab hold of that. It's not too hot. Tell, ask the chef where he wants it, and away you go. All right, audience, remember, you're voting for what the chefs did with the ingredients they were given. Think about that when you're going to be placing your vote. All right, coming up now. Let's get this out. About 25 seconds to go when our chefs get this out on time. That's it. Beautiful potato, a mash, and everything coming alive. All right, 20 seconds to go now. Let's keep this going. Everything's looking good. Beautiful. That's it. You can pull a bit of cream over there for me. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop! <laughs> wow. Woo! 1940 revisited here, ladies and gentlemen. And what did our chefs have in their bag? Well, Paul Rankin starts off with some minced beef, a parsnip, a potato, tomatoes, onion and peas in the pod. While Phil Vickery had a large bag of oats, some fudge, Granny Smith's apples, tinned pineapple, condensed milk and carrots. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 40s fair. I think it looks absolutely superb, don't you? Our boys have done a really... Oh, I've just remembered Bet Davis. Bet Davis was the what name. Like? Bet Davis, do you remember her? Always on the top of the stairs. How am I dying? <laughs> I love Bet. Come on, have a bit of a try. Okay. Here we are. Shall... Yeah, can we lose that, Chef? Yeah, of course. Here we are. You come and have a bit of a try. Okay. Pick up the Start cutlery. With the what about a name, please, Paul? What about... I mean, there was a fair bit of meat in there, wasn't there? Yeah. We'll meet again. Mm. Yeah. Now, tell us what you did with all this lovely food mm. here, Chef. Well, this is a mince and tatty sort of concoction here. We started mm. that off with just onions and mince. Uh, a little bit of salt and pepper going in there. Yeah. Frying it all off. Then we hit it with a little bit of red wine, a little bit of beef stock cube, a little bit of corn flour to thicken it up, a little bit of water to give you that sauciness. The mash on top is just uh, okay. parsnips and, and potatoes, mashed up a little bit of butter and some buttered peas around the outside. Mm. Now, this is a re recipe that we got from General Montgomery because, of course, he fought in North Africa. So we've got mm. the, the cumin, the ginger, mm. the coriander. Mm. Mm. And the chilli in there. We've got mm. the spicy uh, chilli ch uh, tomato chutney. Mm. Underneath there, we've got the little pomme d'arfan, the little rusty type thing. Mm -hmm. We have... <laughs> it's been that <laughs> long since I've had some spice. <laughs> Lovely. Isn't that good? Mm. Yeah. yeah try the old um, <laughs> this is very similar to that. We just took some of the meatball ball filling or the burger filling and put it inside the tomatoes. I, uh, I was going to try and get a little bit of gravy from that and put it around, but didn't mm. quite get the time. Mm. And the soup comes up beautifully, actually, with the pea pods. Yeah. Mm. Very, very nice. Oh, yeah. Good oh, flavour. So tasty. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been weeks. <laughs> I'm eating uh -huh. too. <laughs> oh, I know. You certainly are, my love. Now, do you think they would have been impressed with this type of uh, food in the war? Times. Absolutely, it's so tasty, and I'm, I'm worried now. Craig will expect me to <laughs> mine to look like that. Which well, darling, all you have to do is look on the old website. That's it, yeah. Or I'll see facts because all the recipes are on there. They're there for you too at home. Thanks very much, indeed, nice Chef. Song. Well done. Mm. Okay, Craig, what your turn, mean? mate. What about a name, please? Well, because it's the forties, there's nothing faulty about these puddings. No. <laughs> Give it to the boy. What did you do briefly, Phil? I have to say, <laughs> and the powdered egg worked really well. Let's start over here. This is a, a fudge, a sticky fudge pudding, mm -hmm. which, because of the egg structure, collapsed very slightly, but it'll still be delicious to eat. So, yeah. uh, look at that, the chunks of fudge here. And we made a little water ice to go on top of there. But he put his carrots. Up, Phil, but he didn't try it, no, did he? Look at the carrots in as well. Look at that. Oh, that's look. very nice. Yeah, mate, go on, that you go on. <laughs> Baked apples <laughs> with, with fudge in the side. We put some oats in the bottom, mm -hmm. topped it with the pineapple porridge and a carrot salsa to go on top that of there. Really nice. And a fudge sauce and some honey. Mm -hmm. Key lime pie, condensed milk uh, and cream and lime juice. That's it. Mm -hmm. Here we made a very, very quick upside down pineapple, upside down cake, which would have happened in the 40s as mm -hmm. well because they had tin pineapple. Um, mm -hmm. Again, very, very light sponge using the eggs. And then finally here we made a mock orange carrot pancake. Look at that. Which, so which would, look at that. Which, mm. now look at that, see? With some pots of porridge inside. Yeah, the porridge and, and here, everything else. just dead simple pineapple porridge, which my kids love. Nice Were you happy with the uh, powdered egg then, Phil? Overall? I think it's pretty good, actually, I have to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all right, Ains. We did well. Brilliant. Yep. And overall, Craig, oh, what about you? Oh, it's fantastic. I love that fudge stuff. Yeah? I haven't had fudge for years. There you good. go. Oh, then, mate. Get fudging. Go. Get fudging. God. Oh. Ah, they're all having a good time here. It's oh. like they haven't eaten, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, we, <haven't. laughs> we, we need a winner today, ladies and gentlemen. What do our studio audience think? Green peppers, red tomatoes? Let's find out as we ask them all to please vote now. 
And up they go. Well, just check this out, guys. Today, it's a red tomato day! Hey, congratulations to you two, mate. Hundred pounds spending money there, yeah, Craig. Thank you very much. And good luck with it. Good luck thank with touring around and you know reminding us that history really does exist. <laughs> it does, it does. Very, very important. And nice one, thank, thank you, you very much indeed. Oh, Please make it. Hey, the mum to be. Well, I think because you do all the lovely cooking at home, you're That's not going to be disappointed with no. our ready to be cook hamper, are you? Eh? No, not at all. No. Lots of lovely goodies in there, and I'm sure the old man will take you out somewhere nice. <laughs> right. Did you enjoy it today? Yeah, it was great fun. Thank Picked you. Picked up some Brilliant. lovely yeah, ideas. Absolutely. Just wait till he tastes this. He'll know what he's missing, darling. Chef, what a pleasure. Not at all. Always a pleasure. And uh, they've been great. Just reminding us, I was saying to Craig, ladies and gentlemen, you know, telling our children about the history of what it was like in the 40s, very, very important. They're great. Amanda and Craig. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our chefs can't wait to get amongst the mackerel, the rocket, mm. a packet of rice, jarred horseradish and fresh what horseradish. What are we going to do with that in 20 minutes? What are we going to talk about? In 10 it? minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we'll have is um, a nice seared mackerel salad with, mm. with, with beetroot and a horseradish cream. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have uh, like a lightly curried um, stir fry mm -hmm. with uh, some curried flaked mackerel. Lovely. Yeah. And um, we'll do uh, something else too. <laughs> That's it, is it? I'm sure you will. Okay. Maybe, maybe horseradish and beetroot pie. Yeah. <laughs> mm, it's quite interesting. It's a bit wartime, isn't I it? I know. Mm. But so many of us don't know what fresh horseradish looks like, so we're going to be talking about that. But Phil, tell us what you do with your ingredients here. Well, um, I think uh, do, 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 I think we'll probably do uh, mackerel rolls with rocket pesto. Mm -hmm. We'll then do some beetroot mayonnaise. To go on that, it's quite nice together. We'll do a quick kedgeree, I think, with some horseradish and um, some rocket and some fish. And the horseradish we'll just throw in the bin, mm -hmm. and that's it. Uh, <laughs> you can grate it up, don't be silly. I'm joking. Yeah, grate it up. We'll oh, talk to us about an that. Omelet. An omelette. An omelette. Omelet, yeah. yeah, that's going to be quite spicy. And... Wow, OK, you know what, uh, what's on offer. And so do our lovely studio audience here. They love a giggle, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> so do we. <laughs> Green peppers, red tomatoes, what's it going to be, guys? Will you all please vote now? And up they go. Oh, look at this, boys. Hey, what do you think then, Paul? I think I've uh, got the desired result. You have got the desired result. <laughs> You're gonna, he's going to have to tell you what to do. <laughs> all right, then, let's get cooking. <laughs> Hey, Chef, your ten minutes cooking time starts now. What can we do for you? Um, Ains, can you make me some mayonnaise quickly? Mayonnaise? I will do. I'll make a little reduction. Paul, to it. what do you want to do? Do you want to do a mackerel for me? Sorry? If I give you a mackerel, will you do something with it? I'll do something with it, yeah. I don't know if you like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Encouraging. <laughs> 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 I'm sure you're quite capable of using doing that. <laughs> quite capable. Oh, lovely. Well, well, right. Well, um, uh, Paul, do you want to give us a little bit of a, a little bit of chat about horseradish there and how you get from that stage to getting it into the jar and you know putting the vinegar with it and the cream and everything, creating a bit of horseradish there? Uh, do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> In an ideal world, yes, you're working today. And I, I absolutely adore fresh horseradish. Absolutely adore it. It's one of my favourite ingredients. And it's wonderful with fish, especially smoked fish. Um, and roast beef, of course. Oops. Um, so what you do is this, you grate it. So a nice sort of fine grater like that. Nice fine grating up the horseradish. And then, if you've got a little bit of a cold, you get down there and you give it a jolly good snip. And they'll blow your socks off. That will sort you out, won't it? And I tell you, that clears the sinuses and makes the eyes water. It's very pungent, so don't bother sniffing it. And what I'm going to do is mix that up with a little bit of whipped cream, a touch of mustard, lemon juice, salt and pepper, and you've got a lovely creamy horseradish sauce. It goes wonderfully well with fish. So. All right, thank you very much indeed, Chef. 
Alright, um, now back to Phil. I'm just making a little bit of a reduction there, Phil. Yep. It's not imperative, is it? But I kind of like the no, idea of it. It does help, though, Ains. Yeah, it yeah, does gives, help. Give a little bit of a flavour going in right. there. And some mustard. And literally, I've taken some um, stalks, guys, of uh, parsley stalks and the Sherville, a little bit of black peppercorns, and I'm going to drain that off and put that in there and kind of warm it. And that actually starts to cook the eggs just a little bit. We've got to foam those up and then we can start to gradually add the oil to it, all right? Now... Phil, well, tell us what you're doing there, Chef. Well, Rocket Pesto should have Parmesan cheese, pine nuts, blah, 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 but I haven't got time to do that. I mean, we haven't got any anyway, so... OK. So I'm just going to put a little bit of vinegar, almost like a salsa, of course, a pesto and salsa verde. OK, what about some, um... We've got pine nuts, I've got sesame seeds there. Any good? Yeah, go on, let's put a few yeah, of those put some in. sesame yeah, seeds nice in there. Let's OK, put there. there you go. Seven minutes, on. seven minutes to go now, Phil. That should thicken it up nicely. Yep, absolutely. A bit of salt in there as well. I'm going to make some right. kedgeri ains quickly. Yeah. Which I'll oh, let's get the mackerel on the go. We just pan fry oh, the mackerel really these. quickly. Yeah. Really, really quickly. Can't be about that. And then we'll um, literally going to pan fry it to soften it. Okay, but that's not traditional. Traditionally, you need haddock, yeah. Smoked haddock. Yeah, you should do it. And a lot of people put a pinch of curry powder in theirs as well. But I, I tend and to why, do you, why is that? Just to give it's, it a little bit of... It's the days of the Raj, years ago, and that's, it's an Indian dish. Curry, um, kidgeri was an Indian word, basically an Indian word. So what yeah. I used to do was put curry powder in. And it made a little bit of fish go a hell of a long way. Mm -hmm. So with rice, kidgeri, chopped boiled eggs, chopped parsley as it should be. Um, but it's, I'd love it for breakfast. We used to serve it all the time. Yeah. But sadly... You don't see it often these days, which is a bit of a shame, really. I, I know, you have to go to the old sort of classic restaurants, don't you? Yeah. You go to places like the Ivy or something like that, and they serve it with a wonderful yeah. curry sauce, just it's beautifully a great, um, done. What's a great restaurant in London? Real really traditional British. Well, British rules. Food. It rules. Uh, yeah, you've got rules. I said you've got the Ivy. You've got several of them that yeah. uh, actually concentrate on that type of but thing. But kedgeri, to, to eat properly, really should be made to order. And it's a bit of a pain if you... Uh, OK. You know, ..to get all the bits together. Bit of Make a quick macro here, roll here as well, Ains. Lovely. All right, that's happening. Right now, we're going to gradually incorporate the old uh, oil into it. I've got some vegetable oil. And it's interesting we're talking about oils, ladies and gentlemen, because I've got a question today concerning that matter. This is from Mary Clayton from Colston. Good afternoon to you, Mary. She says, Is it true that cooking with good quality olive oil is a waste? I'll turn this off because I really want our chef to hear this. Is it true, she says, that cooking with good quality olive oil is a waste? If so, which oil should be I be cooking with to get the best flavour out of my meats, fishes and salads? OK, olive oil, uh, are you, are you happy it to It is about true, that? Uh, to, to a very large extent. Um, good quality olive oil is a lot more expensive than the cheaper stuff. And what's going to happen is, is that they, the... the Flavors of particle, the solid uh, particle of the olive, are going to burn a little bit when you're cooking. So um, you're better to use a light olive oil. Um, and by light olive oil, I don't mean a, a low fat or anything like that. The second pressing, or Thomas oil, it's sometimes called. Okay. Yeah. All right. But that's not the same. You've got never cooked. Cook. I could already said. You could hear a word he said. Oh, well, because but I'm my, making my, the mayonnaise. My view is, if you're going to cook in olive oil, a really cheap olive oil, cold, uh, a hot-pressed olive oil, yeah. cook in it and then finish it when the dish is finished with a touch of good oil. OK. There's no point in spending a 20 pounds money. on a bottle of oil and then you put it in a pan and burn it. OK. I think no, it's something like six, six... Did you want an omelette? Yeah. Yeah? Did you make one? I can, yeah. I thought you said OK. About well, 69 degrees. And I, what, what can I add to that, Mary? Um, well, the, I suppose it's all about acidity. When you're talking about extra virgin olive oil, we're talking about 1% acidity, OK? And it grows. Then you've got virgin olive oil, 2% acidity. And that very much depends on the balance of flavour that you're going to get with your food. All right, so you've got to really think about that. Don't go and spend heaps of money. The guys have just told you, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, keep it for your lovely salads or dressing something quite beautifully. And then as you gradually scale it down, perhaps you could do, you know, you've got the sun olive now, which is sun, um, sunflower and virgin olive oil mix. I think that's great for cooking with. Would you agree with that, guys? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The kind of combination, the two of them really work well together. But you don't want to, certainly, I've just made mayonnaise, you don't want to put uh, 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 extra virgin olive oil in mayonnaise, it's just too rich. And it's too strong as well, okay. I think. Okay, uh, yeah, too strong. Too strong. Now, guys, this is going to come out and... Um, here it is. Here's our lovely, lovely mayonnaise. 
All right, nice. You can get the different types of consistency that you want. Anything, just there it all is. Beautiful. And I could certainly uh, have added a bit more oil to that. This is quite rich because you can see I put in three egg yolks into that. That could probably fill the whole bowl up. That's nice and rich. Perfect. And Actually, Angel, can is. you mix the mayonnaise on beetroot for me, Angel? Eh? Yeah. Chop, mayonnaise with a bit of beetroot. Do you want it a bit I'm... looser than that, Jeff, or are you happy no, with that? That's perfect because there's a bit okay. of moisture on there. Um, OK, with how, how much beetroot? Eggs? All the meat OK. Oh, well, then, all of it. How Just a few got? minutes to go now, Chef. I've got for me eggs. OK. Oh, what are you talking about? I've got... How long have I got? You've got two minutes. Have I? Yeah. Well, that's at six minutes now. How long has it been in? About eight minutes. About eight minutes? Yeah. Well, they're going to be hard-boiled, then, aren't they? Not. Take them off, mate. Here you go. <laughs> OK, Paul, what about your omelette there, Chef? Well, I'm just in the process of cooking it. I'm heating up the eggs all together, just until they, solid, they, they form nice curds. And then I'm just going to stop it and let it sort of finish gently like that. That's the way to keep it creamy and not too dark on the outside. And um, what did you coat the mackerel in then, Chef? It looks like A spices. little bit of curry powder and turmeric. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, yeah, isn't that interesting, guys? We've got all these things at home. You've got all these little spices. You're thinking, unless I'm making a curry or something like that, you can just sprinkle a little bit on your fish. It doesn't have to be that salmon, cod or anything like that. Pan fry it or put it in the mm -hmm. oven if you want it nice and healthy. Sure, did Very you use all the rocket? No, sir. All oh, right, then. Bit of rocket. Right, there we are. Come Mayonnaise. Easy. We've got the pesto made. Uh, the Yanks call this arugula, don't they, Ainsley? Arugula, indeed. Arugula. You, can't, you can't say Yanks and some in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Basil. He spent a lot of time out in America, didn't you, Paul? I used to live there, yeah. Yeah, there you go. The man's done it. What do you want me to do with this, uh, here, Oh, Josh, just gonna pop it in the bowl, Ains. OK. And the eggs are a bit undercooked. Yeah, that's a bit, uh, eggs are a bit undercooked. Well, so. I don't mind that, Kedge. Oh, you don't mind that, Kedge, no, not at all. That's OK. Right, here you go. Where's the, uh, rugula? Go on, Chef, go for it. I'll just turn oh. this off. Can we end up that, mate? All right. What are we going to do with this omelette? Hey. Whatever you want, Paul. <laughs> Whatever you want, Have yeah. Have you played for it or not? <laughs> That's well, a bit of an invitation, that, isn't it, Paul, eh? down there, Paul. Huh? Hey, yeah, look. Okay. Come on, let's get this out. We've got 20 seconds to go now, guys. Okay. There we are. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You don't want to do that, do you, no, Phil? No, no, no. OK, tell us what you're going to call this, Chef. Well, this has to be the horserad dish of the day. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that one, give you that one. What did you do? Oh, I've forgotten. Um, mm. What did we do? Well, let's start here. You made some mayonnaise, which yeah. is easy, and that's the easy part. Here we uh, rolled out the mackerel. <laughs> we rolled out the mackerel. Made some rocket pesto with some yeah. sesame seeds, Ains. Yeah, all of okay. us with garlic, but yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then we made a kedgeree with the eggs right, way undercooked, but I did yeah. tell you, but there we are. But the um, rice is going to cook them if the rice is hot. That's going to finish off cooking I, I, the eggs. Are you joking? Yeah, that's kind of good. Come, come and have a look. We well, so, would have had it. We'd have just been it out now, <laughs> wouldn't we? Eh? Two minutes Quick later. Quick kedgeree with um, boiled eggs uh, and some poached mackerel and butter yeah. and lots and lots of chives. In it. Oh, that that rice is pretty good. Which yeah. mm. side are you on? Uh, then we had uh, an omelette here with, with fresh horseradish that Paul made, which is mm -hmm. like, way overcooked, but it's fine. And then, um, and then you made some mayonnaise. How did yeah, you make that happen? Absolutely, mayonnaise. A bit, a little bit of a reduction, a bit of chervil, a bit of uh, crushed peppercorns in there, and the parsley salts. Reduce that down. That's vinegar, white wine mm. vinegar. Reduced it down. Pop that on top of the egg yolks in the liquidizer. Mm. Just whisk them up a little bit, and that starts to actually cook the eggs. The heat from the vinegar. Then you gradually, gradually add the oil. Sorry, and a couple of little teaspoons of uh, or a teaspoon of mustard, dry mustard, mm. mustard powder, makes a big difference. And if you've missed any of the recipes, they're all available on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash food. From Phil, Paul and myself, see you soon on Ready, Steady, Cook. Bye. Take care. <laughs>